Hey guys, DMS here. Today I have for you this, the Sennheiser HD 560S. Let's check it out. So the embargo lifted on these today. Uh, Sennheiser sent me this headphone so I could do a video on it. Um, I've not been paid or compensated in any way to say anything. All the thoughts and opinions in this video are my own. And speaking of which, there's gonna be a video on these too at some point. These are the Momentum True Wireless 2s. So as many of you may know, I have had a lot of Sennheiser headphones over the years. I started out with the HD 205. I've had a lot of their professional headphones, the 600s, the 650s, the 6XXs, the 598s, the 559s, all kinds of things. The 58X, the 660S, the HD 800, the HD 800S. I've listened to Orpheus a few times. Some of their things I've loved and some I haven't. And this, this one makes some waves in a very interesting way. Before I talk too much about that, let's talk about the build. So this is pretty similarly built to things like the HD 598. Let's zoom in a little bit. Let me refocus my camera just a hair. There we go. This build should look pretty familiar to anybody who has seen Sennheiser before, especially in recent years. The 559, the 599, the 598, I'll use this same sort of chassis this very familiar yoke that goes across. There's velour top padding on here, which is nice, as well as velour on the ear pads. I tend to prefer that as it's a bit more breathable. Here on the inside, we have the branding HD 560S, as well as our left and right markings. We have the Sennheiser branding here, and then the Sennheiser logo on the actual grill, which this grill pattern is actually very similar to the HD 660S, which is kind of nice. You can see there's a dark black fabric behind that. And if you look in the right light, you can sort of see the driver behind the fabric in here. Maybe get a glimpse of that. Cable on this is a twist lock removable uh, and it is a 2.5 millimeter. Interestingly enough, this cable seems to be balanced, though I did not get a balanced cable in the box. That could be because I have a press unit. I'm not sure if this will or will not actually ship with a balanced cable, but given that this headphone is a little bit harder to drive than its family members in the 500 series, I would say that running this balance could actually provide some benefits. So the conclusion on build is that it is pretty fair for Sennheiser. It's nothing crazy. It's not going to blow your mind with build quality. Uh, but it is a design that has been proven to be pretty reliable and pretty ding dang comfortable. Right out of the box, they did have a bit of clamp force. Uh, I did have to stretch them out a little bit, wear them in, put them on a block, and wear out some of that clamp force to make them really comfortable. But after I did that, it was great. I still think that the comfort is a little bit better on the 6XX, 650, 600 after the clamp is worn in on those, but this is still an extremely light, extremely comfortable headphone, and it's really hard to complain. So let's talk about sound. This is going to make waves. This headphone is one of the most neutral, if not the most neutral headphone that I've probably heard. This is right up there with things like the R70X, I'd say more neutral than the R70X. Um, it's just flat. It's just so flat. It's, it leans a little bit sharper on treble in some songs, but basically this is doing everything that the 600 and the 650 can't. And that's bass extension, treble extension, and the sound stage, while somehow maintaining that incredible vocal intimacy and lush mid-range performance at an even higher level of detail, competing with things like the HD 660S. And in a few sentences, that is a lot to say. So let's break it down. Let's go through what in the world is happening here. So I have a frequency response graph that is uh, overlaid with the HD6XX, which is basically the HD650. A lot of people heard the 6XX, so I feel like it's a good reference point. On the low end, it is more extended than the 6XX. It's less warm through the lower mid-range, it's basically a flat line. Uh, and then through treble, we have uh, a bit more linear response with a few higher peaks in it, um, but really kind of on par with 6XX. So it's about like a 6XX with more treble, with more extended sub bass, and flat, less warm mid-range. It takes a similar amount of power to drive. Uh, I only have to have the volume slightly lower on this headphone to get it to similar volume levels when compared to the HD 6XX. So it was very easy to measure them side by side. But the differences aside from frequency response between the two headphones is that this is producing greater sound stage than the 6XX than the 660S than basically anything I've heard in this family. It is producing greater levels of detail 
than the 6XX, the 650, the HD 600, or the 660S. And it seems to have a more linear response than everything in that family. Basically, this is making all of those headphones obsolete if what you're looking for is high detail and a flat frequency response. This headphone is marketed as a reference headphone for analytical and critical listening, and it is exactly that. This is not going to blast your face off with bass, though it is more bass than you get out of the 6XX or 600. It's not designed for crazy soundstage like the HD800 or HD800S. It is designed to be extremely flat and extremely detailed and very comfortable. And in those respects, it completely excels so incredibly. There are many things, actually I still have music playing here. Let's go through some songs. Chills, the symbol in the beginning of this song is just incredible. It has such an insanely fast decay for a dynamic driver. This completely breaks my recommendation list. I feel like this eliminates the need for things like DT880. I feel like this eliminates the need for most of the things I generally recommend to people. I feel like this is a more linear headphone than things like Sundara even, which is an incredible headphone for analytical listening. But I feel like I'm getting more out of this. I'm really just taken aback by this thing. I didn't expect this. I didn't expect it at all. I was like, I thought maybe, you know what, this might be a decent headphone. There's many things that Sennheiser's made that I haven't had entirely positive opinions on. I didn't like the HD 800 that much. I didn't like the HD 800 S that much. I really didn't like the HD 820 because I felt like they were all very severely lacking in the frequency response. Um, a lot of the 500 series I said was okay. I did like the 580s, but a lot of the 500 series was just like, okay, very consumer oriented. Uh, my go-to for Sennheiser has always been the 650, the 600, the 6XX, and more recently the 58X and 660S. But this is it, this is the go-to. This is the Sennheiser headphone. This is the go-to Sennheiser headphone. From this point on, if somebody says, what should I buy? This is it. This is the go-to Sennheiser headphone. Do you want completely flat sound with super high detail? Just like down to the... Every, people should be mixing on this. If you're gonna use a headphone at all for mixing, I know you should use speakers for mixing, but if you're gonna use a headphone for mixing, this is the headphone you should be using. I'm powering this headphone in this video, by the way, on the topping A90 and D90, which I'm gonna have reviews out on both of those, so make sure you stick around and subscribe, you don't wanna miss that. They will be published early access on my Patreon. The only time something is not early access on Patreon is if it is an embargoed product like this one. I've been reviewing headphones for four years now. I have had hundreds of headphones through my hands in this room and the other rooms that I've lived in. Many of them I decided weren't even good enough to make videos on, and some that I did make videos on, it was either because I really liked them or really didn't like them. This is the flattest one. Well, if you want to line up in the comments and call me a shill, uh, go on ahead, because this is probably the most positive review that I've ever left for a product on the history of my channel. Let's wrap up on a couple more thoughts. Soundstage, um, not as wide as things like the HD700, HD800, definitely wider than things like the 660S or HD600 or DT880. Um, I would put the soundstage on this in a similar position as the PC37X, which was a drop um, and Sennheiser collaborative gaming headset from a few years ago that was in a similar form factor. I'd put the soundstage on this uh, probably on par with that. And imaging, um, I would say that imaging is probably on par with something like the HD 598 and maybe ballpark with 660S. Um, I think 660S might edge this out just a little bit on imaging, um, but this definitely wins on soundstage and definitely is winning on detail. I have no idea how. All right, I'm gonna stop this video. I've already been going for a while and I gotta get this thing edited. So if you like this video, please leave a like down below and a comment letting me know what you wanna see in the future. If you wanna get early access to my videos and help support the channel, you can at the Patreon link in the video description. If you wanna get active in the community, you can at forum.hifiguides.com. And as always, don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Until the next one, guys. Peace.